morning. Welcome, welcome. So everyone have a good break? Yes. yes. Excellent. Nice little refresher for you to change. We just had that nice course from Tyler about hues and shades. So our class today is from the resiliency group where we're putting it in perspective. And we're going to start off with a short video. If I had a shred of manhood in me, I would call her now. T minus seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Hello? This is Lisa. Kevin who? Kevin Arnold? You've got to hear this. I'm fine, Kevin. How are you? Uh huh. Uh huh. You don't say. <laughs> We're here live at the Lisa Marlini house. So this is talking to Kevin and Arnold on the telephone. Jim, maybe you have an answer to the question we've been wondering about. Kevin Paul, he's uh, it's so obvious she thinks he's a total jerk. I really don't know, Frank, but if we put our microphone up close to the phone, we could actually listen in on the call. Although, I don't know if our audience will be able to hear above all of this laughing. Okay, so that was a, a fun video, but what do you think happens next? Right after the clip, we're stopped here. What, what happens next? What do we not see? What do you think? Kevin hangs up the phone. Kevin hangs up the phone. Very positive. Is this real? Are the actions that we saw real? What do you think, Amy? Well, it would depend, it would depend on the individual because everyone's there. For myself, speaking for myself, uh, if I was apprehensive on doing something, mm -hmm. um, I would picture every aspect in my mind and that would give, give me more reason not to want to do something. Or shy away from it. What I mean is, do you think that this teenage girl really has a news crew and a whole group of people in her bedroom as she answers the phone? Hopefully not. Hopefully not. Yeah. Probably not. I'm sure her parents would be upset there's a news crew in her bedroom. Did you notice that while this was happening, the phone was still ringing? So this is all where? In his head. In his head. Okay. So we're putting it in perspective. And we'll recognize that the scenario here was very stressful. And it, you're worried about being laughed at, you're worried about being nervous, what, what's she gonna say? But putting it in perspective is gonna be a skill that you're gonna use that's going to assist you to lower anxiety so you can, uh, when you encounter personal and professional situations, you can actually deal with them better. So your objectives got them over here on the board. You're going to recognize catastrophic thinking and we're going to identify methods to counteract catastrophic thinking. And we're going to do this in three steps. You're going to have your, we're going to cover the definition, patterns of catastrophic thinking, and then the steps to counteract. So what do you think catastrophic thinking is? Can anyone give me their definition? Jim. I would say it's uh, uh, maybe uh, irrational thoughts that give you uh, anxiety about a situation that's upcoming. Very good. It's negative, negative thoughts. Very good. Uh, catastrophic thinking is, thinking is when you waste uh, critical energy worrying about irrational worst case scenarios and which this prevents you from taking purposeful action. And we could see that there. He, he couldn't even get to actually ask her out because he got paralyzed. Catastrophizing creates high levels of anxiety. And anxiety is an energy robbing monster. It just paralyzes you. I can't function. Catastrophizing prevents purposeful action. But catastrophizing, especially since we're all military, catastrophizing is not uh, contingency planning. 
So let's say that you need to go to a concert and you're taking a taxi. Contingency planning is what do you do if your taxi's late? I have a backup plan, I'll call Uber or something. Worrying about what happens to a taxi if it gets hit by a meteor, that's catastrophizing. Do we see the difference? So what are some situations where you have catastrophic thoughts? Rod. Maybe like you're getting ready to teach a class. Yep. That could be one. Oh, can I get one? Like when I'm driving down the highway, I imagine like the truck in front of you slicing my head off with my neck. <laughs> like I don't know why. I can like literally visualize it. <laughs> and what does that prevent you from doing? Being comfortable. Being comfortable, know. enjoying the drive. Yeah. And maybe you're not, you're so focused on being decapitated <laughs> that you're not really focusing on what you need to do to drive safely. Okay. How is catastrophic thinking harmful to your situations? Louis? You're focusing on so many things that could go wrong, and you're not focusing on what you can do. You're not moving forward. Right. You're stuck. Are you actually accomplishing anything? Are you work? So you have a big exam coming up. If you are stuck in catastrophic thinking, are you studying? Are you reaching out to a teacher? Hey, how do I need to do this? Are you preparing? Now you're like, I'm going to fail. This is the biggest exam I'm going to fail. And you get stuck in that. So let's look at some patterns of catastrophic thinking. There are three patterns. The first one is called downward spiral. Downward spiral is when a situation occurs and your mind generates increasingly negative and improbable scenarios that were going to occur. It causes you, your anxiety to rise, and you just get worse and worse and worse. It's very easy to tell because oftentimes your body will work in a downward spiral with it. I'll give you an example. It's 9 o'clock in the morning. My sergeant calls and says, Sergeant Major wants to see you at 1600. All right, what's it about? Didn't say, just be in his office, 1600, don't be late. That's the scenario. So now I'm thinking. Oh, he knows I'm going to school. Apparently, found out I'm not ready for it. But if I'm not ready, then he's not going to let me go. It took me three years to get into this class. I'm never going to get back in. If I don't get the class, oh, well, there goes my promotion chances. If I don't get promoted, I'm going to get kicked out of the army. Oh man, I'm out of the army. Well. You know, my wife's not going to want to be married to a failure. She's going to leave me. There go the kids. Oh, what are the kids going to think? Oh, the kids aren't even going to talk to me. I'm going to lose the house because I don't have a job. Now I'm living on, I guess the only thing is live homeless under the overpass. Oh, man, the cars. <laughs> what am I going to do? Oh, I'm just going to end up dead. And, you know, they're not even going to come visit my grave. <gasps> What's happening Downward spiral. Downward spiral. I'm just circling down. All right. Am I getting ready for the sergeant major meeting at 1600? No. Am I getting any work done? No. No. My day is gone. So, if you'll notice that, like I said, it becomes more negative, more improbable. Is my wife going to leave me because sergeant major meets me at 1600? Am I going to lose my kids, lose my house, because, because I'm having a meeting with the Sergeant Major 1600? Very improbable. I mean, I guess you could say something really horrible, but it's very improbable that that's going to happen. I'm certainly not going to die because of this meeting. Let's get our next one, scattershot. So this is when you're generating negative thoughts, but there's no strict pattern to it. Sergeant Stanley, uh, yeah, your Sergeant Major wants to see you at 1600 in his office. And what's it about? Don't know, just don't be late, be there at 1600. Roger, thanks. Oh, Sergeant Major wants to see me at 1600. Must be about school. Oh man, how am I going to tell my wife this? 
that you know Sergeant May wants to see me. No, that's probably no big deal. You yeah, guys, he just wants to make sure I'm ready. What if I'm not ready? Oh, how am I going to be an example to the kids? I can't even be ready. How do I expect them to be ready? Oh, they're never going to listen to me again. So, but I got to focus on my work. But I don't want to get in trouble. See, I'm hopping back and forth. There's not a nice coherent spiral, but I got all these negative thoughts in my head. And I'm just bouncing back and forth. So that's scatter shot. It's not quite as progressive, it's very disconnected, but it's still negative and improbable. Circling. Circling is not as common. It's one of the more restricted ones because you just have one thought in your head over and over. And you'll see this a lot in pacers. People just keep pacing. Sorry, yeah, yeah, the media. The sermon, maybe 1600. Don't know what's about. Be there, don't be late. Oh, it's got to be about school. I wonder why Sergeant Mayor wants to be with me about school. Don't know what it could be. It's definitely about school, then. I don't know what I should do. I mean, I'm already prepared. I guess I'll go see him and I'll find out what it is about school and that he's. See how I'm just back and forth. But I'm not getting progressed through or I'm just focused on that one thought that's just circling in my head. Just, and oftentimes you get that pacing back and forth as you're circling. Okay. So I have some questions for you so far. What are the three patterns of catastrophic thinking? Tyler. Downward spiral, scattershot, and circling. Excellent, excellent. Now, which pattern becomes more negative and improbable as time goes on? Jim. Uh, downward spiral. Excellent. All right. What is catastrophic thinking? Right. It's when you are losing, um, work, you're thinking kind of worst case scenario, you're losing energy. Um, kind of what comes to my mind. Okay. Anyone else? You want to add to it, Angel? Not being productive in, on your day to day activities, you're just going off and thinking the super extreme that will most likely will not happen. Yeah. Um, and sometimes it's unrealistic of what actually, what actually, you know, whatever the problem is, taking outside the box. Both of you definitely got uh, big chunks of that. Remember, catastrophic thinking is generating negative, improbable, anxiety inducing thoughts that paralyze your action, prevent you from taking purposeful action to work towards a situation. All right, so we've got catastrophic thinking. We know what it is. We know what the patterns are so we can recognize it when we're doing it. So how do we stop it? What are some steps to counteract catastrophic thinking? And what we're going to do is we are going to do an exercise together. So, let's see. Louis. Yes. I'd like you to be my scribe, please, up on the board. I got a handy dandy marker for you. Thank you. All right, so let's have a scenario here, and I'll give you one of your significant other text you with, we need to talk. That's all you get. We need to talk. Let's start off with some worst case scenarios. We're gonna look at the worst case. What's the, so, we're just gonna start off Simple bad thoughts. We need to talk. Could be a death in the family. Could be a death in the family. She's cheating on me. That's the very first thing. We need to talk. She's cheating on me. That's, that's your first thought. Okay, she's leaving. Good you. Lord, what are your texts <laughs> like? <laughs> Jim, what do you got? All right, so those are some good initial thoughts we need to talk. Remember, we have no other information about what's going on. We don't know where she's coming from. And this is very easy with text messages where you strip out all those extra cues of tone and your body language. You've got just we need to talk. All right, so pick one. Rod, which one should we go with? Um, right, they're all bad. She's leaving. Okay. All right, 
so she's leaving. What's next? What's so she's leaving. What's the next thing that's gonna next level of bad thought? Um, I mean, you can go either pattern. So let's say if it's downward spiraling, it's you know I'm gonna be by myself. Now remember, not jumping all the way to the end yet. No, I'm not, I'm not. I'm thinking. Are my bank accounts secure? Are my bank accounts secure? Let's see. And you just log into that mobile app, check in, and like, oh, uh, is there still money there? <laughs> uh, need to secure an ID card. <laughs> all right. Let's crank it up. All right. So, worry about our money. Going to be alone, kind of. Let's crank it up another level. Oh, uh, is she going to take the kids? Is she going to take the kids? And the dog. And the dog. And the dog. Two little poodle sounder mix. No, she can take that one. <laughs> What's my family going to think? What's my family going to think? I can't even keep my wife. Uh -huh. I'm a failure as a husband. And if I don't get to keep the kids, what else kind of failure might that be? Right, so if she's leaving, she's, we gotta check the account, might take the kids, take the dog. Who's leaving the house? Me or her? <laughs> well, we're doing worst case, you know who's leaving the house. Right? Worst case, who's leaving the house? Homeless. <laughs> All right, so we've lost the house, lost our spouse, lost the money, lost the kids. We even lost the dog. Now where are we? I'm not in my supervisor's office. <laughs> Jim, what was, let's take this another notch up. What's, what's the next thing that gets worse? We've lost everything, including the dog. Uh, is this going to affect my job? Probably going to lose my job. So we've lost the wife, lost the kids, lost the money, lost the house, lost the dog, lost the job. Next. Can this get worse? Oh, yes. We're still breathing, right? Yeah. yeah. What about what are your friends then? Let's, let's lose some friends too. Because obviously it's your fault. Well, in your mind, if, if I can make a comment here, though, yeah. all of this group of people, our ideas as we went along were all outward that this was a problem that was coming into us. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, but somewhere along the way, I mean, we started following along, but it, it started turning into my fault. But. I think all of us were pretty much, this is something that happened next That's true. To it, us. It, it may not be where you internalize yeah. it. Right. But a worst case catastrophe can definitely do that. Yeah. I mean, not always. So we've lost, 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 lost. Any other worst case? Reputation. Reputation. Okay, so we've got some really horrible things here just from we need to talk. Ding! We need to talk. And from that message, we've lost everything. That's kind of catastrophizing. Have we yet actually found out what we need to talk about? No. Okay. So, thank you, Louis. And Tyler. Yes. You're up. So we just did the worst case. We generate all these worst case possible outcomes. So now we're going to flip it over a little bit. We're going to do best case. Or some best case things. And we're going to kind of think positive thoughts about this. Or some good reasons we need to talk. I got a raise. Got a raise. <laughs> Won the lottery. Yeah. Won the lottery. <laughs> I'm fucking so funny. <laughs> we're having another chair. She got a raise. Won the lotto. We're having another child. 
Having another child. Now, some of you may not think of that as a best case scenario, but <laughs> we're going to work with that. That another beautiful, shining you and her is going to enrich the family. It's the best case. Right? So we've got those. Now let's take it up a notch. From there, what's next? So you won the lotto. She got a raise. You have more kids. And what's the most good that comes from? <laughs> We're moving. <laughs> All right. Moving on up. Moving probably to a nicer house now. Yeah. We'll get out of that old beer up that we've been dealing with. Long time waiting for a honeymoon. Honeymoon. Ah. There we go. We're going for the honeymoon. To where? Are we going down the street to the Motel 6? No. No, we're going to? We're going to Fiji. Fiji. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes, Fiji is an excellent honeymoon to Fiji. And then? What's next? More kids. You said more kids? Oh. <laughs> Fiji gets you more kids. Well, that was a very productive honeymoon. <laughs> We're going to hire an in house chef. In house chef? Uh -huh. All right. Nanny. And a nanny. Give you all a lot of free time. I bet you all that free time might uh, give you more time to work for charities and stuff. <coughs> the plan. Oh, we're gonna need a plane to get to those cherries. Plane, gotta have a plane. You're getting a plane. <laughs> the whole week. See, I hear there's a seven ready broke. coming up on all the market. All that money spent. We invest. It. We invest. It. Probably get that that uh, plane from Boeing cheap because. It comes like <laughs> <laughs> right, you can only spend three billion. All right, so we've got some awesome things coming. Remember, this is all. All we got was a text message. We need to talk. And we're going to Fiji in Hawaii, and we're rich, and we're hiring nannies and chefs. Are these likely? No. Probably not. There's probably not telling we need to help get you a lot of winner. But it really feels good, right? So something to notice about generating the best case scenario is how do we feel doing that? Positive. Felt very positive. Felt good. We started having laughing, having a good time. Energetic. Which was easier, generate worst case or best case scenarios? Best case was oh, uh, worse. Worst case, we're trained to think negatively. That's inherent in us. So we can easily, man, we can be dead in no time with worst case. Best case. What we need to do is have to prompt you a little bit, pull you along. Because it's not as easy to think of the best case. That's why we have catastrophizing. If we were, could always think of good scenarios, we really wouldn't need this. Thank you, Todd. All right, so we have. Worst case. We got best case. Now we're going to actually look at most likely outcome. Jim, come on up. Sure. You look Grab your marker. <laughs> Grab your marker. All right, so. Ding! We need to talk. What's the likely outcome here? Something like this. Uh, for me, it'd be something broke in the house. Something broke in the house. We need to get, we need to get fixed. We need to see if it. Yeah, that's. Yeah. I'm still going towards negative. Um, yeah. Try, try not to get all the way negative. Because I'm thinking, like, hey, we need to talk. Kids did something. Kids did something. Yeah. It's not, it's not the end of the world. Kids being kids, kids are going to do something. Maybe they'll get a bad report card. Susan is failing, so what do we need to talk about? Is that the end of the world? Going to affect your job? No. But you need to talk about it. Anything like me, it usually means you need to, I need to remind you about this. It's our anniversary. Oh. But it's still not the oh. end of the world. It's something you need to address. <laughs> it's something you need to take care of. All right, so we've got a couple of possible scenarios here. Something broke, the kids messed up. So we did worst case, best case, most likely. We can actually deal with this, right? We can deal with something being broke. The water heater's busted. No problem. Going to call a plumber. We'll have somewhere. We'll get fixed. Kids are failing school. We'll give them a tutor. Work with them. Check with the teachers what we need to do. You can take purposeful action with the most likely outcome. All right. Okay. Thank you, Jim. All right, 
So what we're going to do now is we're going to practice this. Would like you want to form a group? Okay. Come, come okay. Form a group. Two, two groups or one group? One group. One group. And I want to take about four minutes. Three minutes, maybe. I want you to come up with a scenario and quickly some worst, best. Louis, don't be afraid to join the Do some review. What are the three steps to counteract catastrophic thinking? Jim.
Tyler, help me out. I think of most likely. Most yeah. likely, that's two. In the worst case. Worst case. So worst case, best case, most likely. Generate those three thoughts there. What are three patterns of catastrophic thinking? Downward spiral. Downward spiral? Scatter shot. Scatter shot. And circling. And one more time, what is catastrophic thinking? What's our definition? Louis. Uh, when you generate negative uh, but improbable thinking, it stops you in your place. Right. Negative and probable thoughts usually creates anxiety and it prevents purposeful action. That's the key. Prevents purposeful action. Do we have any questions so far? All right. So, your objectives were to recognize catastrophic thinking and to identify methods to counteract catastrophic thinking. And we went through our steps. We defined catastrophic thinking. We identify the patterns of catastrophic thinking and the steps to counteract catastrophic thinking. These are going to help you as students, and well, not just as students, but throughout life, when you have a situation that can be paralyzing to counteract or break out of it. So use your objectives of recognizing the catastrophic thinking and identifying the methods, and you will be very successful in putting it in perspective. I appreciate your time.